Trent, did you Can you ask Coach the first question, Gene, please? <laughs> no, go ahead. I'm kidding. Could you just talk a little bit about why you had to? You felt like you had to wait this long to get to get a cornerback? Was it just a, was, was trade up trading up not an option in the second round? Just did, is it just the way the board fell? What it, yeah, it's it's really the way the board fell. I mean, we looked at opportunities to trade up in the in the second round, and that didn't go our way. Um, and really excited about the player we got. You know, he was someone that we had targeted. We, we spent a lot of time with him. We sent a couple of coaches to work him out personally on a private workout, which went exceptionally well. Uh, you know, he's 100% cleared from the, from the knee that he suffered two years ago. And, uh, you know, again, like, like I've always said, you follow your board and you got more than one need. You know, we had a need at that position and, and we filled it. How much does uh, what he did this past year uh, seem to be much better in, as a uh, as a nick, in nickel? I mean, how much did that and, and seems to be better in man coverage as well? How much did that impact your decision to take a guy that, quite frankly, a lot of other people didn't have as highly rated? Well, again, I don't know how other people rate the players, you know, and, and where he was on everybody's board. I just know he's a good football player. You know, we, we spent a lot of time with him when he came in for the local pro day and hung out with the coaches, stayed, stayed extra, uh, spent a couple hours with him, you know, and sat down with him personally. Coach, I know, sat down with him. Uh, you know, he's a young guy that converted wide receiver, learning the cornerback position, uh, and, and he showed, you know, through the course of the year, especially as the year went on, that he has a real knack for it, and he can play inside and outside. He's not just a nickel. He's five. He's five eleven and change. He's one hundred ninety plus pounds. He runs four three nine. He can play outside and inside, but he happened to play primarily inside there. What is it about Mason Smith that you loved? Six five. Six five. <laughs> three oh five. Uh, big guy. Um, you know, just again another player that that. Is explosive, can move his lateral quickness. You know, you, you just watch his tape and you see him, you know, chasing chasing some ball carriers down. He can hold the point of attack. He's a he's a space eater in there. He can push the interior of the pocket. He's long, obviously. Um, you know, and, and obviously he had the injury, but I think prior to the injury, he, he's a you know he, he was talked about going, you know, possibly in one, you know, and, and things of that nature. So I uh, feel like we got a really good player there. Um, Obviously, and um, looking forward to getting both these guys here. What How much you give you interior pass rush wise? I mean, I know obviously he's a big dude, but is there some stuff there you think you can? Do I think there's there? some things you can develop, you know, with his athleticism and his, his power, you know, and, and just being able to just push the pocket and just, you know, sometimes you don't have to hit the quarterback as much as just disrupt and and, and get him off his spot, and, and that's what he's capable of doing. Can you play him on the edge too a little bit or no? Is he, is he just well, I mean. Personal? Not like Josh Allen edge, but yeah, no, not like that. I mean, obviously we we got the edge kind of covered, but uh, you know, right now just would would keep him at one position, you know, and, and and see if see where where he plugs in and 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 look, he's he is coming off the injury too, and and um, you know he, he did play, so there's going to be some a little bit a little bit of growing with him, you know, as we as we get him, you know, mixed in with our players. How much did Matt House and Ryan Nielsen and even Garrett, I think, how much did they play in in in, in him coming here? Good. Having guys on staff who know him, know him pretty well. Oh, it, it helps, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, that's obviously Matt was the D coordinator there for two years and understands him well. Uh, spoke very highly of him. You know, his football, his passion for the game and stuff. You know, we got to realize, you know, he's coming off the, but he did play this year. And as the end, as you got to the end of the tape, you know he was he was probably 90 percent by the time the end of the year came around, and 100 percent when we went and worked him out. You know he's running full speed. There's no there's no lingering issues. You know he's a young man that's you know got to have a little more time on task, but his his upside's substantial. I think Mason said he felt like it was uncommon favor that led him here, and he talked about how the um, when. He got the phone call. His heart kind of dropped because he just felt like this was a perfect fit. When you guys hear a guy that on night one is that ready to go and, and so ready to play for this organization, just what does it mean to you both? Well, it means a lot. You know, you, you hope they have a great experience, whether we meet them here 
you know, on one of the 30 visits or at the combine or wherever, you hope you represent the organization well and you hope they, they, they see that. You know, they see the passion that we have for this organization and the jobs that we do, and you hope they, they understand that, see that, feel that, and want to be a part of it. So like, how much can help a guy like Mason coming into a room with veterans like Eric and Roy and all those guys? I, I think it's huge. I think it's huge, you know, to have guys that have been there, done that, you know, have battled adversity themselves, you know, uh, the course of their careers. and. Um, it's it's a really good room. There's some great leaders in there, and and he's coming into that room, and and um, he can just soak up all that knowledge and uh, just learn from those guys. Doug, you mentioned earlier. The first thing you mentioned about when Mason's name was brought up, you started with the, with the size factor, uh, and Trent made it clear at the season-ending press conference about how much he wanted to get more physical inside. How much of, of taking Mason was really about that? It's part of it, you know. Um, you, you definitely have to control the line of scrimmage, on both sides of the ball, offense and defensive lines. And, and obviously, we we feel that adding Mason to that to that room, you know, gets us to that point where we can control, you know, the line of scrimmage. And and um, you have to be physical. I mean, that's a physical position, as it you know, uh, anyway. And and um, you know, again, a guy that that is that is big, powerful, athletic as he is. Um, you know, it's just a, a a great addition to to an already good room. Brad, if you could kind of walk through the process with Jerry and a little bit more how you guys identified him, and if you believe he is a plug and play guy that could play week one. Well, we identified him early on in the process. I mean, we had the scouts in there, you know, during the fall of the year, uh, identified him as a as a prospect, an upper level prospect, and, and then you go through the whole process with him. You know, you, you go through the the pro days and, and the combine and all the things that go with it, the 30 visits. He wasn't one of the 30 visits because he, he, he came here on the local pro day. So we got a chance to spend a lot of time with him. You know, you love his energy. You know, you're going to feel it. We just got off a Zoom call with him. You'll feel his energy as soon as he gets here. He's a, he loves football, you know, and, and you can't have enough of those guys. The game's hard. And, uh, you know, guys that just, just like it struggle when things get tough. When guys love it, they fight through adversity. And he's a young man that's had a lot of adversity in his life, will continue to fight through it. And the, the, you just love the passion. As you've evaluated the cornerback class, have you found yourself maybe looking at this class? You, know, you mentioned the flavors. Have you been looking at it through a different lens, knowing that Ryan is the defense coordinator and the style of defense he wants to play? Yeah, Ryan and, and Chris and, and Corey, they've played a big role in the evaluation of these guys, you know, and, and the board felt pretty true to what what we felt it was going to fall, you know, and he, I never worry about the players we didn't get. You know, you, 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 you can spend hours and hours thinking through all the things you could have done, or but uh, you, you worry about the ones you got because that's the most important thing, and we're, we're excited about these three guys that we've added up to. You know, and then we got a big day tomorrow to add some more guys to this locker room. Jones won the leadership. Go ahead, Jamal. Jones won the leadership award at, at FSU. How much of the person he is off the field weighs into bringing a guy in with the pick? Well, again, I think, you know, I'll let you all judge for yourself when he gets here, the, the energy that he has and just just the, the, the way he approaches the game. I mean, this is a, this is a love it guy. And he's going to bring the bring the energy on a daily basis, you know. And you'd rather have those guys that you got to say whoa and pull them back a little bit sometimes, rather than always have to kick them in the side. And he's one of those guys that you're never going to have to worry about coming to work. Was there, was there some concern on your? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Let's go to Mason. Okay. Trent Mason has uh, obviously incredible length, arm, wingspan, uh, probably the best of, of all the defensive tackles in the draft. Uh, how important is that when you evaluate a player and, and does he use that well when you watch him on film? How, how much of a challenge can that be for the opponent? Yeah, I mean, he certainly does. It's a, to me, it's a huge advantage, especially if they use it. And he's a young man that uses it. You know, when I was in San Francisco, we, we drafted uh, Buckner and Armstead, both taller interior players. You know, we studied Chris Jones, one of the better interior players in the league right now and with that kind of size and that kind of length. And I'm not saying this guy is going to be any of those three, you know, but he certainly has a chance to be a, a very good football player. Uh, so I think all those traits 
play play to his advantage. Now you got to take advantage of it and use them. When 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 four cornerbacks went off the board in succession fairly early in the second round, uh, did you, did you sort of just kind of? Was hope kind of hoping that that wasn't going to happen, or did you fully expect there was going to be a run before you got to 48? Well, if you look historically at the draft in the second round, there's a run, and on corners usually, you know, uh, and w when they start coming, they 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 come off quick, you know. So it wasn't something that was not expected, you know. And again, you try to you you look at things, you try to move. Sometimes you can move, sometimes you can't. Houston obviously wasn't going to trade their pick. You know, so you, you, you just, you, again, the board is the board, you know, and we feel really good about the players we got and Jerrion, the addition of Jerrion, uh, we feel very strong that he can come in here and compete and help fairly early on. You said before that sometimes you got to get lucky in the draft. Was that, and it, it, did you feel that was an instance where you got maybe a little bit unlucky? No, no, again, you know, we had Mason targeted as well and, uh, you know, you can't, you can't, for, and we have a need there as well. You know, it's not like we didn't have other needs other than corners. You know, um, you know, we got another, another day in this draft. You know, with I think, what do we got, five or six picks left? I don't know exactly what the number is, but, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of guys left on the board that can help us. Doug, where do you envision Jerry and starting? I see him, you know, he, he is definitely a position flex guy. I can see him playing inside, you know, day one. He's also a really good special teams player, so he's going to give us value there as well. Is he a guy you would want to stick to one position to start with, similar to, to Mason, or would you move him around? Uh, you know, it, it depends on sometimes the player, too. You know, we, we, we target a position, and, and we say, hey, let's learn this position. Let's get good at this position. And as they grow and develop, then you can, you know, then you can maybe use him in other, in other spots. And he's... You know, so getting him in here, um, you know, two weeks from now when we have our, our rookie uh, mini camp, right, in a couple of weeks, um, you know, then we can really start honing in and, and getting him locked in in one position. Plus, again, the special teams factor, right? So we add that to him as well and, and let him let him work from there. He had one of the better combines, I think, for, for a cornerback. How much does the traits that you saw in that, you know, sort of stand out on tape? Yeah, I mean, it shows up on on film. You know, that's one one of the things. He's a he's a he's a good athlete, good mover, um, physical player too. You know, which which you like. You like to see the the tackling and and getting after guys. And and um, as Trent mentioned, he's he's a high a high energy guy. You know, uh, just tonight he he's emotional and he's high energy and he's excited to get here.